use your car, Jonah? Mama. You left it home? Mama, died. All right, when we come back then, okay? Yeah, mommy got it for you, okay? Mommy's got it. Jonah, what color is that? That's red. Right. And this is yellow, you're right. This is yellow. That's good. That's and that is yellow, you're right. Yellow. Hi guys, good morning. I haven't seen you guys in about three, four days. Hope everyone is doing good. On my way to drop off my girl for the daycare. I thought I would come in with a quick update. I won't be looking in the phone as much, so forgive me. I'm driving. My, my eyes are on the road. All right. Um, visitor's visa. Some people have secured a visitor's visa to Canada. They are not sure how to go about it. If you've been following me, you notice I have done a video in the past sharing ideas on how you can regularize your visit to Canada. Maybe you got your visitor visa to visit a family, or to visit a friend, or to even attend a conference or something like that, of that sort. Basically, you hold a visitor visa. Here, we call it a visitor visa. We don't call it a tourist visa. We call it a visitor's visa. In the US, they call it B1, B2. They call it B1, B2. So that's what I'm talking about. In Canada, we call it visitor visa. Um, you have a visitor visa, and you're wondering how do I regularize my stay in my previous video I said all you need is a full-time job apply for a full-time job in Canada okay remember you already have the visa that allows you to enter Canada you already have a visitor visa the problem is what do I do with it there is an immigration pathway that is allowing people or holders of visitor visa whether they are currently in Canada or not to be able to change their visitor visa to a work permit. And this opportunity, or this immigration opportunity is only valid or open until February, the end of February 2022. So you want to take advantage of it as soon as possible. Now, the easiest way is to apply for a job in Canada, which is full time, get that offer letter, and uh, have your employer issue you or offer you a labor market impact assessment document on top labor market impact assessment document what is that that is basically a document that employers have to fill out to show the Canadian government that they made an attempt to look for a local person for that job and they couldn't get that person or they couldn't get a Canadian to fill that job or permanent residents to fill the jobs and so they had to give it to a foreigner who is visiting Canada okay that is what the document is all about basically it's a document designed by the, the government of Canada imposing a responsibility on employers to first consider hiring or using every means possible to hire people who are Canadians or permanent residents before looking for foreigners to hire them um, it is meant to protect the locals of Canada so because you are a visitor and you are not yet a resident of Canada the employer needs to show that they made an attempt looking for people within Canada and they couldn't get them that is why they've had to go out and bring a foreigner or pick a foreigner somebody who is on a visitor visa to give them the opportunity okay all right that is a labor market impact assessment document. So the two key documents you need in order to regularize your stay or convert your stay or your visa from visa visa to a work permit is one, a full-time job offer. Number two, a labor market impact assessment document issued to you by your employer. I must tell you, it's not easy to get the labor market impact assessment document. It is easy to get a job if you're already on a visa visa. It's easy to get a full-time job, but it's not easy to get the labor market impact assessment. Not every employer is willing to go to that extent of filling out forms to, to hire you and keep you as a visitor. Um, so what the trend shows is that 
there are certain jobs that Canadians don't like to do. There are certain jobs that are in dire need of personnel or labor or employees. These are the kind of jobs that you really want to target. Um, I have shared in the past how you can get just jobs in Canada. Um, today I want to focus on a creative way, a creative way you can use to still get your full-time job with labor market impact assessment. Somebody tried this and it worked. Remember what I'm saying, I say somebody tried this and it worked. So I'm going to share with you hoping that if it works for you as well, it will work for you. So what the person did was came into Canada with a business visa, quickly got their Canadian license, driver's license, okay? This person came to Canada. Then as soon as they came to Canada, back, 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 within a short time, they got their Canadian license. How did they get it? First, it becomes very, very easy for you to get a Canadian license to drive in Canada, okay? I live in Ontario, so I'm gonna use Ontario as an example, all right? We have three kinds of licenses, the general licenses system here. We have G1, G1, uh, G for girl. Uh, I did, it doesn't mean that's what it stands for. I'm just giving you something to know what I'm saying. Pronounce it. G for girl or G for God or gold. G1. We have G1, which is just a knowledge test. You don't go for a road test. You just basically study the rules of driving and then you go and write that test. You go and write that test. The average person can use a day or two to study the materials and go and write it. The G1 is not supposed to be stressful at all. Of course, if you are somebody who has reading difficulty, you will struggle with it. But I'm basically saying that with the G1, you are not taking a road test. You are only doing a knowledge test. You are only doing a knowledge test. In other words, read and go and write. Read and go and just write the test and pass. That's the G1. All right, everybody needs to get that G1. Everybody who wants to drive in Canada, you need to get that equivalent of the knowledge test exams done. I live in Ontario, so we get a G1. Then right after the G1, you are now eligible to go for your G2 or your G test. I'm gonna explain again. When you pass your G1, you will be eligible to go for your G2 or your G. G2 is where the examiner assesses your driving, like a road test done within the city without going on a highway. G2 is where you are tested by an examiner from the Ministry of Transportation of Canada to check your driving within the city like I'm doing right now. I'm driving within the city. I'm not on a highway, right? For you to get a license to let you drive around independently in Canada without anybody telling you what to do, an examiner will assess your driving within the city. When you pass that test, it is called G2. So basically G2 is road test in the city without you going on the highway with the examiner. Then after the G2, we have G. The G is the highway test. Basically what that is about is that the examiner will let you do a test within the city. And then right after that, they will take you on the highway and test your highway driving. The G test or the G license is the ultimate for the average driver. This is what everybody aims to get in Canada. Um, of course, I have a G license myself. Um, when you have it, you can drive on a highway by yourself. You can drive anywhere. You can cross the border to the U.S. if you have the visa to enter the U.S. And a whole lot of that, okay? I'm going to give some critical information about this licensing process and then how you can take advantage of it if you are a visitor holder, a visited visa holder. So pay attention. In about 10 seconds, I'll be dropping my little get down um, at the daycare. Please bear with me whilst I just get this done, okay? Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, trying to park now. Very good. Bend nicely around with us. Perfect. All right. Mm -hmm. So guys, just bear with me. I'm gonna drop my girl down in just some two two seconds or so, and I'll be right back out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotta just get her dropped, and then I can be able to take care of you guys. Just bear with me there.
Whew. When you get here, you need to call the school to let them know you are here. Bonjour, ça va? Bien, uh, Jonah est ici, hein? Elle a arrivé. Merci. Okay, so let me drop my little guy. I'll be right back. All right, Joanna. Time to go. Ah, time to go to daycare. So when you go, tell your friends you got some two new cars, okay? Mommy and daddy bought you some new cars today, okay? Huh? Make sure you tell them, okay? Good. Let's go. I was running back. I was running back. The bag is right here. All right, hmm. all right. Let me finish this video before I jump on the road, huh? Real quick. So, guys, I'm in Ontario. Thanks for your patience. Mm. I am in Ontario, so I'm talking about the Ontario drivers' uh, licensing process. Okay. Um, I am not familiar with the equivalents in the other province, but it's pretty much the same. Mm? So, you come here, you do a knowledge test. Mm -hmm. It's about a hundred and something dollars. You pay about a hundred and fifty or something dollars, and you go. You you basically study the material. The material is available online, free material. You can actually get it for free. You get the materials. Give yourself about a day or two. Study it. Study it. Go take the exam. Pass the knowledge test. Everybody needs that. A truck driver, no matter who you are, even if you are the president of your country, when you come here, you gotta take that test. Eh? So get a knowledge test done. After the knowledge test now, you will now be eligible to either go for the road test within the city, which will not be taking you on the highway with an examiner, just within the city as I'm doing, where the speed limit is 40 and 50 kilometers, hmm? 40 and 50 kilometers. We call that a G2 in Ontario. If you pass the G2 test, it means you are now able to drive independently without anybody assisting you in Canada like I'm doing when I drive I don't need nobody to assist me when you pass the G2 you can buy your own car you can drive in Canada you can even get a rental car and rent a car and drive around you don't need nobody to assist you you are independent you can drive by yourself but after the G2 there is a final level called G the G test G test is basically similar to the G2 except that the examiner will test you within the city 40 50 kilometer roads and then after that he will take you on the highway to check your ability to also drive on the highway we call that a highway test that is called the g license 
if you're a visitor and you already know how to drive if you don't know how to drive this might not apply to you um or maybe it will take a much longer time to get it but this will be more helpful to those who already know how to drive if you already know how to drive and you have a lot of experience here is what happens for a foreigner who holds a visitor's visa and has a lot of foreign years of driving where a lot of years of foreign driving experience means two years three years ten years fifteen years twenty years depending on which country you're from if you can declare a proof of your foreign experience after you pass your g1 knowledge test the service the service center here in canada the driver's uh, center they will allow you to go for either the g2 right away where right away means you can go for it whenever you are ready you don't even need to wait there is no wait time you can go for it or they can also allow you to go straight for your highway test without having to go for the second level of g2 i'm going to say this again if you declare a foreign experience back by proof document in other words your physical foreign driver's license such as a nigerian driver's license a ghana driver's license dubai or whichever country brazil india whichever if you can come with the original driver's license plus a letter from your licensing authority back home your dvla in ghana we call ours the dvla the uh, driver's vehicle and licensing authority if you can get a letter from them attesting to your of experience huh? a letter saying that mr gabby king has been driving for xyz number of years we can confirm that his driving record is legit and clean if you have any questions contact us in ghana if you can get that kind of attestation letter in support of your local license back home when you bring it to canada as a visitor if you go and you do your knowledge test you present it to them and you tell them you have a foreign experience you want to declare it they are going to take the official license and then they are going to take the letter that you are using to support it guys remember that letter has to be legit it doesn't have to be fake by legit it has to even be in a sealed envelope by the dvla of your country you cannot open it before bringing it here it has to be legit and op not opened if you open and tamper with it they won't accept it i'm recommending if you are a visitor and you want to take advantage of this opportunity before you arrive in a country come with that foreign license and come with that letter ready in your envelope so that when you pass your knowledge test you give it to them why is this important these two documents the license plus the experience letter why is it important if you have more than two years of experience very very likely they will let you skip the g2 which is only the city driving and they will let you go straight for your highway i'm going to say this again if you bring that foreign license they will let you skip the g2 which is road test within the city without going on the highway and they will let you jump straight to the highway and then you pass your highway test of course you're going to take a couple of lessons with somebody who is qualified and then you pass your highway test but this is what i want you to understand here why am i telling you about the driving thing here is what somebody has done the person came in with a foreign experience right from an african country quickly got their highway within a month of their arrival when they arrive in canada within a month or so they've already gotten their g1 knowledge test done they pass their highway test as well so they have a g less license now with that now here is a catch canada is in serious need of truck drivers <laughs> canada is in serious need of truck drivers they are looking for truck drivers they are so what this person did was that when they passed their highway test they enrolled for a truck driver's license right away. Truck driver's license. Can you go for that? Yes. But it becomes more easier as you have your G license to now enroll for your truck driver's license. So this person enrolled. Of course, that is a whole process. The truck driving license is completely different. You have to go to a school where they teach you how to drive the truck and all of that. And then after that, they will, let, they will help you to get the license. It might take a couple of weeks or a month or something like that. The most important thing is that this guy knows there is a high demand for truck drivers. So he enrolled in a school, quickly got his truck driver's license. Voila, that is where the story begins now. Once you have the truck driver's license and you are in Canada and your six month visited, visit, you know when you are visiting, you are only allowed to stay for up to six months, isn't it? 
Okay, I'm gonna pause a little bit. I have an appointment, so I'm trying to wrap up. When you have your visitor's visa, even if it's a 10 years visa, or five years, or two years, or three years, you cannot come and stay here for 10 consecutive years, or two consecutive years, or five consecutive years. Visitor's visa only allow you to stay within Canada up to six months after which you have to go back home. Yes, you heard me right. You may have a 10 year visa, but you cannot come and stay in Canada for more than six months. It is the immigration law. Why is that so? The moment you stay for more than six months, you are no longer visiting. You are actually staying permanently. That is why they've customized it. That even though we're giving you a 10 year visa, you cannot stay consecutively for more than six months. You have to stay for up to six months and then you leave. So here's what happened. Within the six months that you have arrived as a visitor visa holder, if you can quickly get your license, the G license, right? By coming with your Ghana license, Nigerian license, Kenyan license, and quickly get that G license in Canada, and quickly apply for your truck driver's license, and you pass your truck driver's license, you are on your way to staying in Canada permanently. Why? There is a high demand for truck drivers in Canada. Everywhere. High demand. So the person who secures their truck driver's license before the six months window of stay in Canada as a visitor, that person is able to quickly apply to several companies that are looking to hire truck drivers. When they apply, most definitely they are getting that job right away because they have their truck driver's license. And remember I said we have a high need of what? Truck drivers. The advantage here is that the truck driving companies here are more willing to offer the labor market impact assessment document, which I said an employer needs to provide to the government of Canada, showing that they mm -hmm. look for people in Canada they couldn't get. That's why they're hiring this foreigner. The truck, the trucking companies are willing to give that letter to somebody who already holds a Canadian tracking license and is living in Canada, much compared to somebody who does not live in Canada and they are overseas. So in short, if you already know how to drive and you have a lot of experience and you have a visa visa and driving is not something you are shy of or taking on a new challenge is not something you, can shy, you are shy of, quickly get your license in Canada and find a way to quickly get your truck driver's license. And when you get that, use that to get a full-time letter from the truck company that is hiring you. They will be more than willing to give you the labor market impact assessment now for two reasons. You are living in Canada, you are not in Africa. Number two, you even have a Canadian truck, truck driver's license, which makes it so easy for them to now give you that job. So what do you do with a job? Once you get that job now, easy. You apply for your work permit, you convert your visitor visa officially to a work permit. And after you get that work permit, in one year, you are eligible to apply to become a permanent resident. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys there. You see, there are creative ways to explore, to stay. When we find them, we'll share with you. When I find any, I'll share with you. All right? Um, share this video to bless somebody. Um, um, share this video to bless somebody and hopefully if you already have your visitor visa I hope you can take advantage of this if you already know how to drive if you don't know how to drive sorry about that but definitely it's not the end of the world you can enroll for a driving school most driving schools will get you ready within a month if you are actively taking your lessons so that you can prepare and learn how to drive and all of that yes people come here and they learn how to drive you can do all of that within a month if you are really really interested in learning the only difference is that if you learn how to drive from the scratch you are not eligible to go for your highway test. You have to wait for one year. But for the person who has a foreign license and they declare it, they are allowed to skip the wait time. I'm going to say this again. For a new driver who has no driving experience, when you pass your knowledge test, you can only go for your G2. You are not allowed to go for your highway. Now, for you to even go for your G2, you will have to wait for one year in order to get that, which will not work for you. So this tip I'm giving you will most likely work for people who have foreign licenses. And remember what I said here, a foreign license. I know people are gonna be asking me questions, so I'm saying this. A foreign license means any license which is not a Canadian license, it's called a foreign license. So don't ask me about your country. <laughs> so long as your country is not Canada, then you have a foreign license, right? It doesn't matter what, whether you are from 
So long as your license is not a Canadian license, whether it's an American license, <laughs> whether it is a UK license, whether it's a European Union, uh, whatever license, an African license, Dubai license, Chinese license, it's called a foreign license. So long as it's not a Canadian license. Once you have that foreign license, all you need is the physical foreign license and get a letter from your authority there confirming your driver's history or your experience. When you go to your ministry and you ask them, I need a letter of experience, they are going to write it for you. But make sure it is in a legit envelope and sealed. You don't want to open it. If you open it, it's going to be considered as tampered with. All right? So that when you come, you can present it to the agents, uh, the service center here, when you are going for your knowledge test. They will upgrade you to go for your G license. There are so many things you can do when you have your license in Canada. There are jobs you can get on the side, like different, different things. There are so many things you can do once you have your license in Canada, right? But I hope this helps you. All right, Jean-Pierre, uh, Jean-Pierre, how are you, my brother? My brother all the way from France, salute you. I salute you, special birthday um, 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 celebration going out to Rose, Rosie, Rosie Okain. Um, Rosemont Okain, all the way in the, um, uh, the, 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 the salon, the executive salon in East Legon. I want to wish you a happy belated birthday. And thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, you can post them. But I think I've explained myself well. Watch it. Do not ask me about your country. If your country and Canada, if your country is not Canada, it's a foreign country. Don't even ask me how about Europe. Am I is meant that you are not. So long as your country is not Canada, don't even ask me about it. I've already said it. If your country's license is not saying Canada, then it's foreign. Doesn't matter whether you're from Europe or G20 or G7. It's a foreign license. You got to go through the same process. All right. So I hope those of you who have your visitor visa will take advantage of this. So, for example, a question there. Olu Ashegun Adiolu. Does that include Swedish license? I've already answered the question right now. It doesn't matter. Swedish license is not Canadian license, so it's called a foreign license. You will need to have the same thing. It doesn't matter which country you're coming from. So long as your country is not Canada, you're going to need to declare that proof of experience, if you have any, plus your letter of experience as well. Okay? So if you can get those documents and you already have your visited visa, this could be a fast-track way to bypass the visited visa to get that job. Remember, we said it's difficult to get the job with a labor market impact assessment, but truck companies are willing to give it to you. If only you can get your license in Canada fast within your visitor's visitor, visit, visiting period. I hope this helps you. Thanks so much for watching. All right, I'm going to be running off, see if there is any question. Uh, what about if when you have the driver's license already? If that driver's license is a Canadian driver's license, and it's a G, then of course you can go and upgrade it to this from Nana Mikhail Galaxy GH. If your driver's license that you're talking about is a Canadian driver's license and it's a highway, then of course you can go ahead and apply for your tracking driver's license. But if it's not a Canadian driver's license, then you definitely will need the experience on top. Remember, in order to be able to go straight for your highway test, you will need a minimum of two, three years experience on your foreign license. In other words, if you are a foreign driver, you need to have two or more years of experience for you to be eligible for a highway test. If you have less than two years, they will not allow you to go for your highway test. They will tell you your driving experience shows that you haven't had enough experience and so you need to wait more. This will work for people with driving experience two years plus and they can get a license, a physical copy and they can get the experience letter. All right, I hope this helps you there. All right, how do I get a visitor's visa? I've already done a video on that. You can also Google it and find that today is not about how to get a visitor's visa. Today is about those who have already gotten their visitor's visa and they are looking to convert that to. So, all right, so watch my old videos on my YouTube channel, Mr. Achiri, uh, Mr. Achiri F. Achiri. Watch my old videos on my YouTube channel. I've already covered some things on visitor's visa. All right, the same name on YouTube, Choco Melonia. When you go through my content, you find my old video. All right, um, all right, guys. Let me see if there is any other question. All right, thank you. That does it for now. Mm, good, good, good. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Chaka Millionaire. I live in Canada and I vlog about Canada and uh, personal life as well. And uh, mm -hmm. and I hope this video helps you. Share this video to bless somebody. And if you have a visitor visa, I just gave you one way to look at it. If you already have drive and you have a foreign experience already. God bless you and thanks for watching.
Um, you don't need more money, and I certainly don't need more money. We all don't need money. We need more wisdom. With wisdom, we are going to know exactly when to make the move at the right time. God bless you, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.